I have my brush loaded with red and I'm just coming out from that pivot point and adding red. up on the chisel edge of flat. Pretty solid. And that's the only place that we have red. Then back on this back flower pansy. Again, leaving a little bit of an opening in the middle. You can streak magenta or crimson. And I prefer using a flat rather than a liner with a liner. You end up with something that looks like whiskers, it seems. And of course, this white flower up against the white bowl gets a little bit lost. And so, just a little bit on that bottom petal. And those are the, 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 that's the first step of the adding the streaks. Now, you can be very brave and bold and put the black right on top, or you can dry this. Uh, I think that, that I will dry and come back and, and put that on top. But, let's go ahead, the pot is dry. And so I think what needs to happen is glazing down the left side of this pot. And I'm just taking a whisper of black, thinning it down. The main reason we need to glaze this is to really knock down those flowers, the, the flower decorations that are on that side and just to give it a little bit more form. And just working in the original light area. And then one other thing that's quite effective is coming in just a little bit of raw sienna to function as a turning color. Just to add some warmth. And that just goes where the medium and the dark meet on that bowl. All right. Like I said, I'm going to dry, and then we'll add some more.